All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. A little bit of a different setup tonight. And let me check and see how things are going. Looks like we are loaded. Just checking on the uh, Twitch inspector to make sure I'm, I'm still looking good. But happy Saturday evening. So I figured I'd take a little bit of time tonight and um, do something a little bit different. I actually wanted to do a bit of soldering this evening and work on this this thing right here which has been on my on my list of list of projects to mess with this is the darknet industries defcon 26 darknet badge um go back and see yeah it looks like it's pretty good so excellent so i'm not going to spend too long on this tonight 45 minutes or an hour just hang out for a little bit and, and walk through the soldering process on this now but this is a cool little badge it actually has a um, it is the main microprocessor is a um, arm cortex m4 stm32 i don't know if that'll autofocus all the way into that in that package but there you go oh, there you go that looks nice so you can see that and then Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities are on the ESP32 that's here on the front. And those, and those, in addition to USB port, a few other capacitors and resistors uh, are the only things that are soldered on here ahead of time. Everything else is just sort of uh, there. Everything else comes in this big old bag here, right? So I am... Uh, Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. So this little anti-static bag has a whole bunch of components to it. So let's get to it. I'm actually going to have a tab open with all the instructions for how to go through this. But this is what I'm going to do tonight. So it may just be me here alone doing this, and that's okay. That's, uh, that's part of the fun, right? So this comes with a whole bunch of components. I'm going to try to keep these organized here in my on my fancy little organizer. It's from Stream Elements, okay. Oh yes, and this is the link to the instructions. So, you know, which is what I have open. There's that. Straight up unboxing. Um, so, this will come in handy a little bit later, this plate. Then we've got a whole bunch of very, oh, let me turn on my soldering iron so that we're ready to go there. LiPo battery, of course. Not gonna need that for a while. Ah, the old SAO connector. The four pin, I'm not focusing on that. Shitty add-on connector. That's what that is. Okay. Let's get that out of there. So I'm going to try to get things kind of organized here a little bit. Before we get to it. A couple of small LEDs. Another SAO connector. Four pin header, what is that? 16 pin? It's probably for the screen. Or one of them, oh, maybe not. Okay. whole lot of a whole lot of buttons little switches here so let's get these sort of organized and this looks nice and neat so we're ready to uh, ready to actually do something now oh yeah let's take these out too though oh, nice that bag. I got scissors in here 
looks really fancy. Use a knife. So I've had this on my list of things to do. I didn't get to go to DEF CON last year, but I had a friend that actually got me a handful of badges. I did a little bit of badge design myself in 2018, created a few few iterations uh, of a badge. And so I was bummed that I didn't get to go to DEF CON, but this was actually a coworker and friend actually brought me back a handful of badges, including this one, which I know is one of the popular the Darknet Industries badge is one of the in-demand ones that people want. All right, this little OLED's kind of cool. So 0.91 inch OLED. Let's see if the if the webcam is actually gonna autofocus has been. There we go. Now it's actually doing its thing. I guess I just have to sit still for that to happen or not move my hand. So we'll do that with the OLED. We got a little TFT here, 1.8 inch spy TFT with quite a, what is that? It's a regular size SD slot. Good God. Wow. All right. When you really want an SD. And then we got the, uh, foam out of here and we got the thing itself we have the actual badge so let's actually see what we got in terms of instructions here I'm gonna check my part list here so we have one darknet industries Conrad personal communicator circuit board that would be this one one 182 one 28 by 32 OLED display on 1.8 color TFT, one four pin male header for LCD display. Wait, no. Yeah. 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 Two three millimeter LEDs, one eight megahertz crystal, nine tactile switches, one LiPo battery. It's off camera, but there's the LiPo. One JST connector. One acrylic backing to tape the battery to. Four nylon nuts, three millimeter. Nylon screws. Oh, sorry, nylon standoffs. Nuts, screws, and then the lanyard. Just hanging, hanging out somewhere else. So we're gonna do the easy part. We actually start by soldering in the LEDs, and these are right here, so. LED polarity is most of the time, almost all the time, long leg positive, short leg negative, right? Anode positive, cathode negative. Uh, and it looks like the silk screen actually doesn't tell us one way or the other. So I see LED one, oh, sorry, LED two and LED three. So Looking down at the front of the board with the Darknet logo on the bottom, ensure that the cathode is toward the left as shown. Yeah, so we're gonna put it in like that. So it's nice and snug. To bend the leads back. So those will be nice and... Um, and I, some people really like using third hand tools this is the third hand tool it's like a thing that holds electronics in place while you're working on them i don't know why but i don't really like them a lot of times i feel like they get in my way more than anything else so when i have a, a mat like this i usually just kind of just kind of do my own thing so that's what i'm gonna do Take a look. 
Not too bad. Got the LED flush. We got it in. Bloody, bloody, bloody. Skipping some things here. In the instructions. Clip the leads. And we got the first LED down. Exciting. All right. Checking the stream. Everything still looks good. For anybody out there watching, hanging out, hope that you are having a good Saturday night. My, my kiddos are in bed. And so I'm here doing this. My wife is actually out of town this weekend. So I'm here on Twitch, hanging out. I'm hanging out, hanging out with y'all. Doing this, like I said, this has been on my list for a long time. Um, let's say I do the same thing with the other side. Doesn't say to do the same thing with the other one, but I would assume you would just do the same thing with the other one. Let me go back up and see. Cathodes toward the left. I mean, we can assume the same thing here. seen some comments in there so shuchi how you doing uh it's going well it's going well hopefully you're having a, a good evening and uh siva matu hey welcome appreciate both y'all saying hello so it's actually going to be powered by this by this lithium polymer battery here um and i have a jst connector for it that's going to get soldered in if i were to guess Based on looking at the silk screen, the JST connector will probably go. I don't want to skip ahead. Ah, right here. So JST connector is probably going to end up going like down there on the bottom. Oh, what is this? Razor camera is not auto focusing. There we go. There we go. How long will that battery last? So, you know, that's a good question. This is a 2000 milliamp. 3.7 volt battery. This has two microcontrollers on it. It's got an ESP32 and it's got an STM32 on it. I will have to do some field testing on this one. It should last a while, I, but I haven't used this yet. It's got This has two screens on it as well. I am guessing if I'm fiddling around with it a lot, on a full 2000 milliamps, I can probably get through this battery. I mean, this thing will, badge will probably be burned in a day. Um, but it depends on what's actually happening once I actually power this up, um, like what it does in terms of the screens and the functionality and things like that. So we're gonna have to find out for ourselves, which would be part of the fun, right? But LiPo batteries are a good, good power source. They run at, you know, they're, they're 3.7 volt batteries. So they're not, you need to have a... You need to have electronics that can actually run at less than five volts. Um, lipos are actually also kind of volatile. <laughs> These are the same kinds of batteries that are in cell phones and computers. However, they are encased and protected. When you buy bare lipos like this, which you'll see common in a lot of electronics projects, they're fine. Um, but if I were to puncture this thing right now, it would be the Twitch clip of the century. Let's just say that. It would not be a lot of fun for anybody. Well, actually, it would probably be a lot of fun for you all to watch, but it wouldn't be fun for me to experience. So let's not do that. All right. Note the next one. Good questions, though. Feel free. Keep them coming. I, um, I am happy to chat. And keep on answering stuff as I go. If it takes me a second to respond to comment, it's because I'm I am. Um... Aha! 
Babin, I appreciate that. I was just about to say, if it takes me a while to respond to a comment, I, I have an iPad open with the chat but I may be switching back to the instructions. So Babbitt just said, FYI, the JST connector faces inward on the badge, not outward like you had it. I made that mistake. And you know what, Babbitt? I super appreciate that because if I hadn't, if I hadn't realized that, I may have just skipped right over it and done that incorrectly. And then that would have been a lot of fun, but that makes total sense if it goes on here like this, because then the battery is actually gonna sit in here. Come on, webcam battery is going to sit in here with this plate protecting this protective plate over it so yeah cool all right so we have the leds in appreciate that very much babin So now we got six tactile switches that are going on the front of the badge. These are going to be, according to the instructions, these are directional, mid, and fire buttons. So it looks like they're all, they're actually all labeled. We'll give this a second to see if that's going to, like a light here kind of out of the way. Yeah, so mid fire and then these will actually snap in. Oh. <laughs> I think I saw comments. I'm going to jump back over. I skimmed the instructions and well, I regretted that. Luck luckily, I didn't plug in the battery before finding that out. I am glad you didn't either. And you and I would get along quite well. I skim instructions all the time. I'm terrible about that kind of stuff. Hey, Grogar, welcome. Welcome. Happy Saturday evening to you. I was just, I, uh, and thank you for throwing in the, the cyan panda swag. I appreciate it. Um, I, uh, I was just thinking about your giant boards yesterday. Happy Saturday. To, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I am stoked about those, man. I cannot wait to get some feather compatible full on Linux computers. Make good stuff. Um, for those of y'all that are listening, Grogard is in the chat. Um, if you go to, I think Grogard is at growboards.com, G R O B O A R D S.com. Um, he's done a number of projects, but he's actually working on a Adafruit Featherwing compatible single board computer. Um, which I think you're, I think you're looking to launch on a crowdfunding site in the near future. Should be pretty cool. There it is. Thank you for sharing that. I hope that they. <laughs> I shouldn't talk and try to plug these things in at the same time because I'm not doing well. And I'll try to actually keep this in the camera even as I'm looking at it. Oh, come on. I may have borked that one. Launch a developer beta sometime next week. Awesome. Well, count me in. Got it! Yeah, I beat you, tactile switch. These are tiny. My hands are... Here, I'm going to... See, I got a light back here. I'm going to turn off, see if it's actually, maybe actually making the situation worse. That's not where the shiny light's coming from. All right. Actually, that light was helping me. So I don't think it's doing anything for y'all, but it's helping me. So I'm turning it back on. Too old for this mess. There we go. All right, so those switches are in. Now I just need to solder them down and then clip the leads real quick. So let's do that. One thing I got to be careful about here, 
when I'm doing this. And I mentioned this earlier, but there's already a number of capac uh, SMD capacitors, surface mount capacitors and resistors that are already populated on this board. I don't want to accidentally jack them up. I don't know about y'all. Soldering is a very relaxing activity. I'm a kind of frantic. I don't know if manic is the right word, but I'm a pretty frantic. My brain is always going about a million different places. And I have a hard time focusing on things. Soldering is one of those things that really, really, just really, really relaxes me. I eat solder for breakfast. Technobly. Hey, Brett, how are you? Happy Saturday, my friend. I know you eat solder for breakfast. I have seen you. You're a pro. Have a little badge life fun tonight. I hand, Grogart hand placed some of the first giant boards. Are you serious? Oh, man. Yeah, I bet that was rough. I did, um, I took it to the logical limit recently. I did for our first, for our second Kickstarter campaign for the second children's book, we had the, I did a custom PCB for those. And it was not a, not a complicated PCB. It was relatively basic. Um, but it did have, because one of the ideas that we had was we actually wanted to give people, um, you know, they were removable components. And so I didn't actually solder in any components. I just soldered in connectors. And one of the things that I soldered into the boards was, um, 10 single pin connectors, which are very painful and very difficult to keep in place. I got a system down to try managed to get it you know, make it happen pretty fast. But those were, um, and I would like did 250 of those, all of them. The kids helped out a little bit with some of the early stuff, but they didn't, I did all the 10 pin connectors. Oh, that was rough. Okay. So the next thing is it wants me now to solder. There's three more switches. So many switches. Where'd my instructions go? Come on now. Come on now. Solder and switches for the ESP program reset and STM reset. Uh, so I mentioned earlier, there's an STM32 on here. Arm Cortex M4. Cool. And there's an ESP32. Um, so there's program and reset switches that are actually wired out to the board. And then an STM reset switch that's on here as well. Um, which is really cool. So I got ESP program here. I have ESP reset here and the STM resets over here on the other side. So three more of these things to put in. What's cool about doing doing board assembly like this is when you get all of the, the pieces out, it's actually kind of like putting a Lego set together, which my kids are super, super into right now. And it's fun. I love doing it with them too. But you know, you start out with this giant pile. You have this big old pile of Legos. When you get a set and you're going to build it, go through the instructions, get your pile. And then you, you know, start putting things together and then you get sort of inspired. You get that momentum as the pile gets smaller and smaller. And as the creation comes together more and more, assembling a kit is like that too. We're putting something together hand assembling a board. Um, like you said, Grogard, it can be painful if you're doing a lot of it, but I'm, I was just, I just was struck with that thought as I'm seeing my pile of things here get smaller and smaller. When you get these badge kits, you think, oh my gosh, there's so much crap in there. And now, I mean, there were nine switches in here, which is definitely a lot, but like now I'm seeing this pile actually get, you know, get pretty small on me, which is cool. So I got three more of these switches to solder in. Right. 
So I got a still relatively new to this Twitch thing, but I actually did get a, a capture card recently. And I was thinking about I had, I came this close earlier today to, to doing a live stream of playing Super Smash Brothers with my kids, with my three boys. But I figured no one wants to watch them beat me. Actually, probably some people would. Um, my oldest is, is getting to that point where now I cannot just by default just beat him at everything. It's no fun. Actually, it is fun. I love it. I don't mind it at all. Now that one looks like crap. Come on now. That ain't right. Grogard, I'm I'm uh, I'm curious if you're listening right now, how many um, how many components that you actually had on the uh, how many components you have on those giant boards, and what do you have on there? Do you have any O201s in there? Or are they all like a 402 size? I mean, I'm sure doing the first couple was painful, regardless, because you have a lot on there. But I mean, you probably had some pretty small small components on that tiny form factor. All right, I got the switches in, that's great. So now we're actually gonna add our crystal oscillator. Such a fancy term. I'm gonna make sure I get my... All right, get the crystal in correctly. Oh. Also, I'm not wearing safety glasses. Don't get upset at me, please. I can't see with them on. I followed all the rules of soldering when I first started, and now I don't follow any of them. I'm terrible, I know. The fact that I can't see through the safety glasses probably just means I need new ones. It doesn't mean that I'm, it's not really a legitimate excuse. All right. Let's clip these. And for anything else, like you should have them to keep clip leads out of your eyes. All right, crystal oscillator on. So now we're going to add the OLED. So the OLED looks to be actually driven from the. Oh, that's how they're doing it. So the OLED's actually driven from the ESP32. And I had what Mr. Technobly himself tell me. Keep get rid of these. I don't need to keep these little flags on, right? These little protective covers. Don't bother leaving them on. So I'm taking mine off. You only get one pair of eyes. I know. I know. I should be better about it. All right. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So this actually goes in. There's kind of only one way that this can go in. So it's not, you know, it's not going to go in that way. If you follow the picture, it shows pretty, pretty clearly. You're putting, here, I'll try to hold it still, see if it'll focus. SDA, SCL, serial data, serial clock, VCC and ground going in. And then. So I'm picking it up 
and redoing that first pin just to try to get it flush. It's way too many times I've gotten stuff in all wonky because I got too fast and didn't pay attention. There's some tiny little components around here. Rip off the band-aids, that's what it was, yeah. I will say you can scratch up those OLEDs pretty easily, so don't throw it in a box with a bunch of other Pokeballs. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely won't. The, uh, man, the text on my, I mean, I can see the chat over here. The text on the video is too white. It's kind of hard to see. I should fix that. Holy smokes, I just noticed it's time to dye your hair cyan. Yes, that, thanks for the congrats. I actually have the dye. I will do it before Tuesday's, before Tuesday's stream. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. Fun little process. All right. The first boards used O201s, but it was problematic to get manufactured. Oh, really? Because you were just having, because they're um, phasing out a lot of O201s. All use O402. 160 components. Man. Good on you. That's, that's amazing. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. So now in the JST connector. You know what's funny? To harken back to, uh, I'm going back to Babbitt. If you're still around, I'm looking at the picture here. And um, this picture is not obvious about the orientation of the JST connector. So thank you for saying that. I mean, I guess if I'm looking at it, So it's going on in that way. I could have easily missed that. Most of the places you got a quote from wanted to charge more for O201s. Okay. But it would have been like, I mean, this is pick and place work, right? It's interesting. Where am I? Oh, there. I looked down at the board and all of a sudden I couldn't see what I was supposed to be soldering. Yeah, it's not super clear from the first photo. It wasn't until they show up being plugged in and I'm like, oops. So thank you once again. most machines don't have high enough accuracy. That's interesting. Second. I mean, it is a lot of accuracy that you need out of something that can handle a 201 or smaller. Glad you I am super glad you could help. Put on newer equipment. Okay. That makes sense. How do I... Skipping the song. All right. Let 
Yep, yep, trim the leads. And now we're on to the LCD display driven by the STM32. Yep. It's attached to the board using these headers, female headers. All right. So that's to give you clearance and also so that you can remove the display if you want to add in programmable LEDs, which they don't provide in the kit. You can add. So start by cutting the provided female header for the eight pin side of the display. Oh, come on. I hate cutting these things. When cutting female headers, you always have one sacrificial pin, which is lost at the cut, as it's not possible to cut between two pins as you can with male headers. Oh, it's possible. I've done it, but only like once. <laughs> Count out eight pins and cut on the ninth. All right, you want to watch me bot botch this? Good thing this is like eight team. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cut on the ninth. You know what it told me to do, right? All right. My father-in-law, who is a carpenter, or at least was a carpenter earlier in his life, said measure twice, cut once, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Okay. I did it. It's actually not bad. Let me see if I actually got eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Yeah, the board looks like it has loads of goodies. Two LC yeah, two LCDs, two microcontrollers, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I know it's kind of nuts. It's, it's 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 beautiful looking too. They did they did do a good job on it. So the Darknet badge is always one of the you know, like people wait in line to get this thing every year. It does really really well. I yank out the pin first where I'm going to cut. Not sure why I do that. It's fun. That's actually a really good idea, though, because then you don't have to worry about whether you got it right or not, you know? That's really smart. All right, so now I'm presuming this is going on the top. Oh, so next we need a four-pin header for the other side of the display. So count out four pins and cut on the fifth pin. All right, so now I'm going to try the Technobly method here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut... I'm gonna pull the fourth pin, one or fifth pin. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you know that is actually kind of fun. It's like it's like pulling teeth. Not that that's fun, I suppose. Okay, yeah, that was a good idea. Cause then at least I've got a clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is for the other side of the display. Oh, right. If we actually want to... Oh, now I know what this is for. Okay. So I mentioned I mentioned earlier the, the comically full-size SD slot on this TFT. Like full, full-size. It's so funny that when I saw this, my first thought was like, I've gotten so spoiled on like, micro SDs that I looked at this and I'm like, is that a compact flash slot? <laughs> and then rip off the band-aid. Yeah, get that out too. Okay. Do both sets of headers. Set them on a flat surface. Yep, 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 yep. Gives you a visual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Did they use the SD slot? I think I th there is not an SD card included, but I'm presuming that you can. I mean, so they built this. There's some built-in kind of stuff that, that I'll play with, but they also meant it to be um, a bit of a dev board as well. And so I presume that you will be able to, or that I could use the SD slot pretty easily. I got to get rid of that stream elements message. It's now irrelevant. Because I have to dye my hair. Thanks, Stream Elements. We got it. All right, 
one side secure. Ah. I was just curious if there were header spots and traces ready. Yeah, yeah, there are. So, I mean, there actually is. This, I'm presuming, this four pin, this four pin mail headers that came, I'm presuming, maybe they don't go in now, but those actually fit right there. And that'll go in this side. And then in terms of traces, it's routed. You you probably can't. Well, maybe you can. It's act, Yeah, you can actually. It's routed. It's routed somewhere. Yeah, and Babin, you said it's a beautiful looking board. I, I love, I love the black solder mask. I did a badge last year for the Bay Area Maker Fair that we did matte black solder mask. That, that was a, that board, that was nice. That was looking really, really good. All right. Little bits of artwork on it too. Oh yeah. And that's tough. I can tell you from experience, yeah, I mean this octopus, um, it's not impossible to get good silk screen artwork on a PCB, but it's not easy either. The, the CAD tools, you know, it's not a, it is increasingly, but it hasn't always been sort of like a common use case to like, oh, I need to actually have a good graphics file importer for my CAD tool. Um, and folks like, I'm sure Grogard knows tricks for this as well, but I know that the Technobly Brett does. He's been doing this for years. There are lots of cool tricks to getting artwork on boards, but it is not user friendly. Not an Eagle, which is what I use. I've used KiCad as well. It wasn't easy in there, really. Um, I have no idea with like Altium, the big Cadillac tool. I did my own SAO Super Noob and it did not come out terrible, but not really that nice. The little bits of artwork on it just looks so good. Oh, you did an SAO? Cool. I did one last year as well. Which, uh, what did you end up doing? The SAO stuff is really fun. That was a cool way for a lot of people to get into the whole, myself included, to get into the whole badge life thing and, you know, Lower ceremony, you're not having to build an entire board, but just something that plugs into something else, which was which was kind of neat. that your headers are flush. I did all that. Next we'll add, oh yeah. So now we're gonna add the four males. Add my mail pin header here. Okay. All right. Oh yes, and now we can do the do the SAO headers using a second solder mask layer for the silk screen art gives you a very high resolution. Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I made a J.R. Bob Dobbs head from Sub Genius. And like only 10 of them, but it was fun. I only learned to solder early in the year, so the whole SAO thing just made it so accessible to make something. See, that's cool. That's what I really love about it. Um, and I love that you looked at it that way because, yeah, that's that's what was that's what's been so neat about it is it's like, yeah, you don't have to you don't have to spin your own board. It's kind of fun just to do just to do something like that. Create something that blinks, takes power 
leeches power from another board and lights up LEDs. Uh... This leaves us a uh, pain in the rear. I just saw the hack Hackaday Tendy post about the Tendy badge and thought, hey, I bet I could. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, those little Tendy badges are really cool. Uh, and yet, same kind of thing, like an easy, easy first project. So, Babin, what did you design it in? Did you use, uh, did you use uh, KiCad or? Eagle, or Keycad. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. I know that I like the puzzle of designing boards. Yeah. So interestingly, you know, I started my, started sort of a new hardware stream series on Tuesday around the Brew Buddy, the homebrewing project. And I'm going to redo, I'm going to respin a board for that one next Tuesday. And I'm excited because it's actually been a few months since I've done any any PCB design work. I used Eagle because that's the first tutorial I saw was an Eagle. And yeah, KiCad seems to be more popular with the badge life guy. Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's probably true because it's a free and open source tool. I, I use Eagle. I like Eagle. I think it actually has come a long way. I, to be honest, both of those tools have come a long way. Long, long way, especially in the last couple of years. Eagle used to be maddeningly difficult. But it was one of those tools, like most of those tools that when you get used to it, oh, I'm doing this to myself. When you get used to it and you figure things out, you sort of forget how painful it is at the beginning. Rogard, I made the switch over to KiCad a while ago, a few months before five. Five. So I will say I have not used KiCad since five, and I'd heard lots of since five came out, and I've heard good things about it. I do need to check it, check it out again. All right, those are in. Getting there. There's not much left here on this table. In fact, now it's just standoffs all right so now I'm gonna install the standoffs this kit uses pieces of acrylic which acts as the battery holder for the lipo Protects both the light, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Also ensures that you're able to remove the battery from the badge, which is a very good thing. Such as hacking. Yep, yep, yep. I'm reading ahead here just a little bit so I make sure I get this right. Okay, the standoffs are actually going on the back side. How is that happening? Hold on. These pictures are not, not making a ton of sense to me right this second. So I'm putting those in. Oh yeah, the standoffs aren't for this. Sorry. The standoffs are for... I got myself all confused for a second. The standoffs are not for the screen. They're for the back. So I make sure I put this in the right holes. I was just about to put the standoffs in the wrong place. I don't think they fit. I think these holes are a little bit bigger. Wait, oh yeah. Okay, I got that one in.
what's happening? That one's not not behaving. Come on! Okay, yep, back. Now the nuts. Install the nuts so that the nut is on the front of the badge. Okay. Just hand tightening all these. Maybe. <laughs> My hands are not doing this well. Okay. fiddly things. This is harder than soldering. Screwing these little things in. There we go. So close. All we have left is the Acrylic battery holder. Oh no. But I'm gonna have to like peel all this crap off of here. <sighs> to avoid getting the glue from the backing on the acrylic, use a fingernail. Finger I don't have any fingernails. To remove the inside of all letters and numbers, which have a center bit. You're joking. This is a joke, right? I'm being trolled right now by these instructions. This, this is ridiculous. Okay. Okay. This is right. So the A zero, I have to like anything. Oh, the six as well. That's so tiny. All right. I don't know. Is it too bent? I mean, it looks kind of cool. It's coming out. Yes, a little exacto knife would do the trick. And I, you're right. I thought I had one on my desk. I have one. Hold on. One second. Brilliant, Rogard, thank you. Exacto knife is exactly what I needed. Another super awesome, then <laughs> you'll need safety glasses again. Oh, I know, never stop needing them. Another super awesome thing about the DC Darknet guys is they release all the files on GitHub. Still too new to really understand them, but someone else might be interested in looking at that. That's a great, that's a great point. And there's another badge that I have that they did that. Um, it was the, uh, oh, Grover, this is way, way easier. You just made my evening. You and Babin saving, and then Babin saving me on the battery thing, the JST connector. Technobly reminding me that I needed safety glasses, which is true. I, uh, no, the, um, Hacker Warehouse folks also release all their source files for their badge, which I got, and I used that. I actually, actually cribbed some of their stuff. ALSWNet, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um... And it's really cool to see how other people do badge stuff and sort of use that as, as inspiration for your own work. And it helps me a lot because I am not a, I'm not an embedded systems engineer by background. 
or trade. So it's fun to get to learn from experts. Red, I know you're watching, so I'm trying to just only move the knife away from me and not towards me. But good golly, this is fiddly. Some of these are really on here. on is anybody anybody at home out there taking bets on whether or not I would cut myself I didn't I love it when the tip of the exacto snaps off and goes flying oh yes I know I know what you mean P there's no P on here okay alright Remove the paper backing on both sides now. All right, still another chance for me to. Oh yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Careful, careful. This is a satisfying feeling though. Pulling, on... oh yeah. Okay. This makes it all worthwhile. Especially if you can get it all off in one. Oh, yeah. Except for this. Stupid little thing at the bottom. Maybe that's supposed to be... I don't know. It looks kind of cool. We'll leave it. Command code. The command codes folks folks designed the DC Darknet badge this year. Or last year. Because it is 2019 after all. Such a satisfying feeling. All right. I forgive them for making me snip all those other pieces off. And now I have to be like, okay. You'll find it when you step on. <laughs> yeah, thankfully I've never done that, but yeah. I'm a web developer, so it was super different to work with something physical and electronic. Makes mistakes are more experienced too. Expensive too. Yeah, for sure, Babin. Uh, I'm a web developer by background as well. That's actually been been most of my my career and experience. So I'm I'm right there with you. The electronic side of the world is one I've only been in for five-ish years now, um, and I love it. I still have a ton to learn, but it's really neat to be in this physical side side of the world. Okay. We're getting close. Use a piece of double-sided tape and attach the battery to the acrylic. Well, you didn't give me any double-sided tape. Thankfully, I always, I keep a roll of foam tape in my desk. So I guess I can use this. Can't go wrong with always having some foam tape on hand. All right, so which side of the acrylic do I want to? I presume, oh yeah, because it kind of matters here. Got those big ones on the, there we go. On the back, why don't I keep it in the? Mm-hmm. Looks about right based on what I'm seeing in the pictures. Don't puncture the lipo. All right, hold on, it's not telling me to. Ensure to turn off the badge before plugging in the battery. Yes, thank you. Which way is off? It doesn't say which way is off. <sighs> punks. Not punks, me, I'm a punk. I started as a software developer and learned hardware so I could make the cool stuff I wanted. Yeah, I love those kinds of stories. That's uh, that's partly what motivated me 
to get into hardware as well. It's just I'd been spent so much of my career in software and creating things, and I I didn't learn everything, but I felt like I really wanted to get into the physical side of things and learn how to use these skills to create other stuff. You know, create real things that move and go and things that break. I can create a lot of things that break. Attach the acrylic plate to the standoffs. Love making things that break. And I also have in my desk screws, screwdriver. Gotta have that. Did I get? It's not happening. Oh, it's just got a lot of way to go. No, oh, it feels like nothing's happening there. Wrong. We get a bit that actually works here. Hey, LSWNet, thanks for the comment. Thanks for jumping in again for the follow. Thanks for being in chat. Just have a little fun assembling this badge here on a Saturday night, and it is almost done. And the big moment of truth is y'all are going to be here with me when I either can prove that I succeeded in putting this thing together or embarrass myself epically when I turn it on and nothing happens. Which wouldn't be the first time. The whole badge life thing is what got me interested in hardware and soldering. Never really thought about futzing with it before. And wow, having a lot of fun with it. I love that. Me too. That's that was that's been a big, big motivator for a lot of people over the last year for sure. Uh, what does the PCB do? This, I, you know what? We're about to find out. This is actually a badge from the. DEFCON security conference uh, from the Darknet team. They create badges every year. Um, usually highly in demand, really popular badges. So this is the Darknet Industries badge. They're, this year they're calling the Conrad II Personal Communicator. Looks so futuristic. I'm putting it off. I'm putting off turning it on as I'm explaining this. Um... And a lot of these badges have just basic games and functionality, but we're about to turn it on and actually see. But it's got a few micro uh, microcontrollers on it and a couple of screens. And uh, let's see here. Finally, turn on the badge. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let's turn it on. It works! Yeah, look at that. Okay. So the screen's got a menu system on it, and it looks like I can actually do up down here, and I'm assuming uh, select here. So this is settings, badge pair, address book, 3D, screensaver, STM, scan for NPCs, test badge, scan, shitty out on badge. Oh man, where's my trash panda? I almost feel like this has to be this has to be paired with my shitty add-on. Yeah, I wish I had seen your comment, Brett. Yeah, of course I do. You know I have. I have at least one. Yes, thank y'all for the woots. All right, y'all hang tight because I do have an SAO that I'm gonna pull in here. One that a few of you will recognize. So 
Babbitt, no, I did not get the SAO eggplant they made. This is actually the SAO that I created last year. Um, the Trash Panda. Sort of also become a bit of a theme on my live stream here. But this is the Trash Panda SAO. And uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and plug it in. Oh, did I plug in the wrong one? What? Maybe an orientation thing. Sometimes they do these wonky. I may have to. All right. My SAO is not working. That's what it looks like. And the eyes are supposed to be red. So sad. That's okay. Let's get back to this. Mess with this badge. Got to let the smoke out somehow. I know. You know what, actually? You no, know, they have the right. Well, whatever. I'll figure out the SAO thing later. But yeah, that's mine. All right. Settings, badge pair. What does that do? You must set your agent name first. Okay, okay. Settings. Set agent name. Current agent name. Oh, man, look at this. The menu system looks a lot like the one I wrote for my Arduino menu system. Um, I, so Grogard, which one was that? Cause I used one on the badge I did last year called Q menu system. I actually ported it to use the OLEDs, the two inch OLEDs that we were using. Um, but the hacker warehouse folks were using it too. Um, oh, Babbitt, cool. Awesome. Maybe so. I'm glad to hear that. All right. So B, oh boy, this is like. It's like setting your name on an NES. I feel like I'm back in 1987 playing Zelda. Oh, for the IL for the ILI 9341. Okay, cool. Brandon. So then. Uh, it's, what do I do when I'm done? Save successful. Okay. Need to run, but thanks for streaming. This is neat to watch. Oh, Babbitt, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I wasn't sure if anybody would care to watch me doing this tonight, but I appreciate you coming and hanging out. Um, yeah, this is this has been a lot of fun. I'm about ready to wrap it up myself. Oh, it's almost 10 o'clock here. You have it as a particle. Oh, okay. So you did the particle library for it because I'm using that actually for my... That's the screen I'm using for my, um, for my brew buddy. The uh, it's the Adafruit 1.28 no, TFT. I don't have to double check, but I'm pretty sure I'm using that. I'm using your library for that, which is cool. All right, so badge pair scanning. Oh, this is for other badges. Well, that's not going to do anything. I don't have any other badges. How do I escape? Pebble239, thank you so much for the follow. High five. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming and hanging out. How do I go back? And I go back. Where's my escape hatch? I'm hitting all the buttons. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B. It's not doing anything. I've got to follow, turn it off, and turn it back on. So a lot of these badges were meant to be soldered and turned on like during DEF CON. So what that feature would likely do is that's, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, sorry, I changed the song. Don't like that one either. Okay. So the badge pair would look for other badges near you. Address book. 3D. Let's see. That'd be some fun. Oh, cool. So right now this thing is getting 26 frames per second on this little cube animation. That's cool. Is that the only one? Is there other, other animation? Okay. So all of these are exits. Um, yeah, Grogard, the menu, the, I, so the Q menu system that I ported, Gleesra following. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome. We're just hanging out doing some PCB badge construction tonight. Actually just got this thing finished here and I'm just exploring the features on it right now. I might have to do, I actually have a few other unassembled badges. So if y'all want me to do some more of this, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Screensaver. Max generations, 131. Simple menu system. 
cool. So I will have to, uh, if I'm not using it, I'll have to use it because right now on my, on my brew buddy board. Okay, fine. I'm just going to pull it over here real quick, actually. Never mind. No, I'm not. It's all plugged in. I don't make a huge mess. I stay focused. Um, but I'm not using a menu system on it right now, and I want to. When I first built that three years ago, I had no clue how to even begin to create something like that um, or use something like that. So STM info. So here's info about the main STM32 microcontroller that's kind of underneath on the bottom there. Or is it? It's underneath the, the smaller OLED here. How do I get out of here? Okay. The ESP32. It's two cores. Showing you heap size, free heap size, all that cool stuff. So I'm going to see if we can get these. I'm going to get this closer to y'all. It'll focus. Maybe. There we go. All right. Bald Engineer. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming and hanging out. So communication settings, fetching data from the ESP. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is, okay, Wi-Fi is down. So this is what I want to do. I actually want to try to see if I can actually get this on my Wi-Fi. Um, okay, so it's it's doing, it's Bluetooth advertising right now. Really? Well, so then if I turn on Bluetooth on my phone. Yeah, nothing showing up. So if I can, okay, AP status down. Yeah, but I want to change it. Okay, AP, there we go. Oh, is this actually setting, actually using the SP32 to turn on an access point on the badge itself? So that's one of the things that people do at DEF CON is just sort of open up APs, either just for fun or as honey pots or whatever. I'm still, I'm still trying to get the menu system on here. Fetching. <sighs> okay, so I can go up and down this way. Hit enter here. Change. Uh. I mean, this is an impressive piece of engineering, but the menu can menu is a bit frustrating. But it's fine because I've, I've, I've done the same. So. AP type open, SSID. Yeah, this is for just setting. Health. How healthy am I? Avian flu? What in the world? All right, so this has got to have something to do with the game then at this point because I, let's see, do I have avian flu? I don't think so. I can't even change any of these. I can view them. Okay, weird. Scan for NPCs. So, all right. So the Darknet folks, I think, probably had like other badges broadcasting around at the conference uh, that would show up as NPCs or non-playable characters in their little game. The whole point of doing a lot of these badges at DEF CON is you then have a game that you can either hack the badge, you can um, participate in games with other folks, things like that. And um, so that's actually part of the fun. So test badge. Up, oh, up, oh, yes. Oh, okay, so you can do exit, hold, middle. Oh, so that would be help. That menu would have been more helpful. Hold, hold left and down for LED. Really? No. Nope. Oh, there. Oh, that's bright. 
And turn on the LED by holding left and down. What about the other one doesn't do anything? Unless I soldered it in incorrectly. Bet I did. Probably messed up on that one. That's cool though. And scan for shitty add-on. No shitty add-on badge found, but I do have one. But just looking for an I squared C scan. You know what? Actually, for a minute there, and this is not this is not an I squared C device. All that's on this badge is two rear firing LEDs, like surface mount LEDs. These are actually red LEDs that are called Z mount or Z bend or rear firing LEDs, and then a little. 51 ohm resistor if it'll zoom in on that poorly clean so there is no there's no i square c device on there but i did notice that when i actually tried to scan this when i click scan the badge the lights did the lights turned on for just a second i thought they did All right. Well, that was fun. That's all I got for tonight. I just wanted to put that together and play with it a little bit. It's like it'll be some more fun to explore. Like I said, I have some other badges like this. It'll be kind of fun to put those together. But for now, that's it. Thank you all for coming, hanging out, spending some time asking questions, um, pointing out things that I was either doing wrong or about to do wrong. Always appreciative of that. You all have a great rest of the Saturday. And... Uh, Talk to you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye.